let's learn how to graph absolute value, which looks like this. This is really similar to a parabola, except that instead of a U shape, it is a straight sided V shape. Our result will look better than that. Please make sure you remember what absolute value does. If I say, what's the absolute value of 10? The answer is 10. What's the absolute value of negative 10? It's also 10. It just takes any number inside those straight brackets and makes it positive. Much like a parabola, the absolute value has a vertex at 0, 0. For other graphs, I might call this a locator point. Um, it's just where the graph starts. So we'll start it at 0, 0 here. To find other points, um, we have a point where x is 0. Let's find one at 1 and at 2. And just because absolute value is a little bit funny, we're going to go negative 1 and negative 2 also. Once you see what the parent function looks like, you'll just know where those points are, and you don't have to refigure it out every time. OK, here is our equation with these x values plugged in. So let's think about what they all are. The absolute value of 1 is 1. The absolute value of 2 is 2. The absolute value of negative 1 would be positive 1. And then of negative 2 would be positive 2. So when we actually graph these, we get 0, 0, 1, 1, 2, 2. On the other side, negative 1, 1, negative 2, 2. If we kept this going, you would see that it just continues in this straight-sided V-shape. How do you graph a transformed absolute value function? Well, you'll be able to tell its absolute value because it has these straight absolute value brackets. The transformations are exactly the same as quadratics. So the number inside will move it left and right. It does the opposite of what you would think. So you would think negative 3 would move this way into the negatives, but it actually goes into the positives. So this will move right 3. The number on the end does exactly what it looks like. It seems like plus 6 will go into the positives up 6, and it does. In the front, you have to address the negative and the number being multiplied separately. The negative will reflect the graph over the x-axis. All that really means is that it's going to be a v pointing upside down. The 1 half is going to compress it, so it will be shorter and wider. We can call this a vertical compression or a vertical shrink. So we can either count for the vertex and count over right, one, two, three, and then up, one, two, three, four, five, six, and that's where our vertex will be. Or we can say the vertex is the opposite of the number inside the bracket, so positive three, and the same as the number outside the bracket, positive six. To find more points, we already have a point where x is 3. Let's do x is 4 and x is 5. So we'll plug those in for x in the equation. OK, so here we do inside the brackets first. 4 minus 3 is 1. The absolute value of 1 is 1. That negative on the 1 half wasn't inside the bracket, so that's still negative. So negative 1 half times 1 is negative 1 half, plus 6 gives me negative 5 and a half or negative 5.5. Let's do the same thing for x equals 5. So inside the brackets, 5 minus 3 is 2. The absolute value of 2 is 2. 2 times negative 1 half is negative 1, plus 6 would be 5. Oh, and I am realizing this is not negative 5.5, that is positive 5.5. Whoopsies. Let's graph those points. Because absolute value is straight, you can also just kind of see the pattern and continue it down. It also has an axis of symmetry, just like a quadratic, which means we can match these points on the other side 
of the axis of symmetry. So here is our upside down.